Okay, what's up, Internet? This is Shad with Decade Sound here in Tacoma, and we're a 3,000 square foot uh, commercial recording studio. We've got several different rigs running all uh, Presona Studio One. We've got some pretty nice gear, but the newest version of Studio One, I'm not really digging, and I got some issues with it, so I've kind of got a little testing set up here to demonstrate it, and I'd really like to get some feedback from everybody else. Um, I would also like to give a shout out to Lawrence at Presonus because um, he's been really good about you know fielding my questions and stuff. So anyway, without further ado, here's my first niggly with Studio One. So this here, what we're looking at is uh, 2.5. So I haven't done any updates in a long time because I just didn't need to because it works so good. So one of my biggest complaints right now is that on the first version, on the earlier versions of Studio One, when you group tracks together like this, when you click on a track, it highlights all of them that are grouped, which is awesome. So you can actually see at a glance which ones are grouped, okay? Now, if you come over here, back over to this machine here. So this is a this is Studio One 4.5, and if, if I can get this focus here. So these, I grouped all four of these tracks together and when you click on them, they don't highlight. See that? Just one single track highlights at a time. So you can't see what's grouped, but you can tell that I've got them grouped, okay? So that's pretty cool. But one of the problems is, like if you want to see what they're all, which all of them are grouped, which ones are grouped together, you have to hit this pull down menu and then it'll show you on each one or you can actually do like a, um, you know, highlight all of them together and then pull them all down together, which is, you know, it's one more stroke that's kind of a pain in the butt. So one of the other ways that you can find them though, is to go, okay, well, let's click on this little guy up here and then go to the group that you have selected and that highlights them. See, that's kind of weird. So what if you have like 20 groups there? And sometimes we get projects that are upwards of 150 tracks in here. So this is a pain in the butt to be able to have to do this just to see which tracks are grouped together. When in contrast, on the other, on the other older system, we didn't have to do that. You could actually just highlight one group of tracks and click on it, and then you could see automatically which was in the group. And then if you wanted to isolate a track, um, you would just hit, you know, um, option or whatever, or depending on which format you're running. So that's a, a big pain in my neck. So I'm not digging that. So the other thing that I'm not digging, I'll come back over here to Studio One on this computer. And this has been our main system that we've run for a long time. So when you, on this version of 2.5, when you arm a track to record, Okay, so those are groups. I've got these soloed right here so that you don't hear the rest of the session play, but we just want to be able to um, kind of play around with this without hearing the rest of the song. So when you arm a track, you can actually get the, um, you, you see the levels coming in on the faders and you see them right here. Okay, that's awesome. And then when you push go and record, Get the record button down here. Boom, there's that. You can still see your input fader level. Right? And you see right here on the timeline. Okay, so you can constantly monitor what your inputs are doing on the mixer view. That's awesome. That's a big thing. So you come over here onto this one. This is 4.5. Okay, so the tracks are armed. You see the level, okay? And we've got a little bit of mon the monitor things happening there. So when I turn the monitor off, because I we don't monitor from the software while we're tracking, we monitor off the console. So when you push record, it records. See, it's recording, but your input level goes away. And you, you see it on the mixer. You don't see it. And then when you push stop, your input level comes back. That's terrible. I'm sorry, PreSonus, I love you guys, but you gotta fix that so that you can monitor while you're in record mode. But now if I want to have 
track monitoring on, now you've got it coming, you hear it through, coming through the console, and we push record. So now we've got it, and we can actually have it. But now I've got all of my, my monitoring stuff is coming down my main outputs, unless I assign every individual track to a different output or set of outputs. That's terrible. Sorry, Personas, but you screwed the pooch on that one. Now, here's one other thing that's kind of more of like a, a, a user thing, I think. So when you size up a track, if you look down here, the track names are nice and bold and big. And then if you highlight each track, this is on 2.5. I love this, the way that this works. So if I stretch this out like this, that's all fine. And if I, now that all four tracks are highlighted, when I pull down, see how they all size together, right? And you'll notice that not only is the font bold, but the further you pull this down, now all of a sudden the track name up top, you know, is on the very, very top of uh, whatever the channel that is. And so you've got all this extra room here, like if you have long track names, which is pretty cool. Um, plus it's bold, it's nice and clean, it's easy to read, and it's not crammed. So if we go back over to this machine and look at the same kind of a thing. Okay, so there's track one right there. And if we stretch these out, whoops, sorry. Nothing really moves. And if I pull this guy down, if I can get size right, it doesn't, doesn't ever change. So this view right up here doesn't ever change. So if you've got like a long track name there or something, it doesn't ever move. And the font is so small, like on this little laptop for our mobile rig, it's very difficult to read. So Presonus, uh, 4.5, I will tell you this, it sounds better, it really does. Um, but I tell you what, that whole input level disappearing while you're recording when you had it on the earlier, earlier versions, that's a big thing for guys like me. Um, I know that there's a lot of other ways to try to monitor it, but the convenience factor of being able to see it on the monitor channel or on the recording channel is a big, big deal. And that's, you know, see that right there? Oh, levels. Yep. Levels. That's pretty awesome. And then if we record, we can still see the levels. That's a big, big deal for me. So the fonts down here, keep them bold, make them nice and easy to read. Let, when you scale that section, please let that, you know, be able to show longer track names. Like 4.5 doesn't allow that, that's terrible. Um, it's not a super, super, valuable function, but it is still very, very useful. And having to go into the different group functions on this to see what's grouped is a huge pain in the butt. And I'm sorry guys, but um, I'm not a big fan, but it does sound better, but some of these things are geared more towards guys that are, you know, beat makers and, you know, kind of the home hobbyists and that are only monitoring, you know, off of the computer themselves and that's certainly not me and it's not the two other engineers that work in here full time so um, anyway um, thanks for listening leave your comments below let me know what you guys think um, I wish 2.5 sounded as good as 4.5 does um, and it, it actually I mean it still works great and the whole entire system works great but a couple of these functions are really really frustrating for me to deal with so anyway Leave your comments below, guys. Presonus, thanks for building great stuff. I've turned a bunch of other people onto the software, but this is one of those things that just is very frustrating. So please put back the bold fonts, because we like that. Please put back the scalable view of the channel, of the track view, and make sure that the record function doesn't disable the input meter, because that's really frustrating. Anyway, thanks, guys. Bye.